Welcome, everybody. We'll be beginning momentarily. If you could, I posted a question about a quick or a quick question about what's the difference between a uh, reference photo versus a professional photo? What's the difference between a reference photo, in your opinion, and a professional photo? We'll begin shortly. And do me a favor, just give me a quick hello. Hello, Larry. Just a quick hello and tell me where you're uh, watching from. Hello and welcome. I'm Vanelli to another uh, Luminar Coffee Break. Now, in this episode, we're going to talk about how to scan old family photos. And I'm going to take you through a bunch that, that I've done personally, or I should say, I hired a good friend of mine, Alyssa, and she spent, oh my God, something like four, eight, 12 hours, a long time. She spent a long time scanning these images for me, and I'll go through them. These, are, these were images taken on a Canon um, film camera way back in the day, and we'll, we'll go through some of that. But so let's see, people are coming in. Hello, Phyllis again from Florida. Russell, welcome back again. And Larry from North Carolina. So now, <clears throat> excuse me, we're all cooped up. These virtual coffee breaks, they work because Skylum's concept is we're going we're to supply the expert, experts, experts. You guys supply the questions for us to answer. And that's what's going to make this a really cool virtual coffee shop to where we're sitting down together as a team, grabbing a cup of coffee, and just collaborating on stuff and learning different things. Hello from Italy. Yes, you asked me before. I am um, Italian. My family is from Italy, second generation Italian. We have my favorite cousin Marianne here. And in a moment, we're going to begin. So I asked earlier, what's the difference between a reference photo and a professional photo. And let me show you some examples here. So I know my little son, little, he's 23. My son Alec is gonna kill me for showing these. Here's my beautiful, adorable sister, Maria. So again, I paid Alyssa to sit down and scan all these images in. Now, what she did for me is she created a folder called Scan Photos. And for now, we just put it on my desktop and that's where I have it. What I do want to happen is I'm going to put these under my photography folder and then let my 3 to one backup take care of it. In other words, I have a 3 to one backup plan. Three copies of your data. Two of those are stored locally. One stores off, stores off site. Just type in 3 to one backup Vanelli. You'll find a ton of articles on it. This way, these precious family photos will never be erased. All right. So again, these images here were scanned using um, this Epson scanner. Now, is it the best perfect scanner? By no means. But for 80 bucks, it's worth it. If there's another scanner, the Canon one, I've worked with the Canon one, again, 86 bucks. Not bad at all. Now, if you're my buddy Kevin Ames, who's been a photographer or commercial photographer, I think since the 70s. Everything he has is on film and on, on, on slides. He would never use something like that because those photos that he has are professional photos that he's made money off of. They're photos that he's going to um, use for forever. And those are ones that he wants to get every pixel perfect. For myself, these images, not so much. These are called reference photos, in my opinion. So a reference photo is just that. It's referring to a moment in time that I took these photos. And if we tried to make it like a hardcore photo shoot, we're going to miss out. So here's my sister and my son, Alec. You can see the interaction with these two. Is it a perfect photo? No. However, we're going to use Luminar to kind of make it better. It's not going to make it perfect, but it's going to make it better. 
Now, here's how we're going to do this. So, uh, hello from Holland and Canada. So, here's how I always like to start. And I told you this before, I love AI um, Enhance. So, the AI Accent is my absolute favorite favorite um, tools that we have here in Luminar. Look what this does automatically. So I found myself doing that on a regular basis. So Skylum created AI Image Enhancer. Click. Look at that. It applies the light tool and it, it, it adjusts for the highlights and some of the shadows. For this, I'm going to bring the shadows back a little bit because I don't care about what's happening back here. And digital noise lives in the shadows. So let's bring it back even more. And then, of course, AI uh, Enhance. I can decide by looking right about here. And a splash of color to where they bumped up the saturation just a bit. Now, I actually like vibrancy bumped up. I'm going to tone down the saturation a little. Good. And that's about it. So, before and after, I made my image look much better. Hey, Dave. Now, here's the other option. I'm going to come in with digital with uh, denoise, and I'm going to give it a, a nice supply. And yeah, let's let's look at this at 100 percent. Good. Here it is. So turn it on. Turn it off. It helped out a little bit. Look at that. All right. So once again, before. And after. Now, will I use that image or what if shoot, they were my clients? Would I sell those to my clients? Obviously not. But in a moment of time, there's my young child with his aunt who he loves mimicking her and having fun. If I tried to light the whole set, I would have lost that. So that's what I mean by reference photo versus a professional photo. And as photographers, we have to make sure we don't go overboard and make everything a production. So, and I don't know, but if you're like me, we, we have that bad habit of just wanting, you know, a perfect photo every time. So, now, here's what's really cool about Luminar. So, imagine my sister is the one doing this. We scanned all these images in. Well, this one got scanned in a little backwards, which is fine. We'll just rotate it. Left. And then, oh, let's rotate, make sure I got it selected. There it is. Uh, rotate it. Give it a moment. I think I threw something up. Yep, I did something. Let me go back here. Um, this image I know, rotate. Oh, left. And let's do the adjustment again. Oh, there we go. Oh, there it goes down. It did it. <laughs> Sorry. I guess it was a little impatient. It was doing a few things on this on its own. There we go. And let me bring this back down to medium. Uh, back up to large. Okay, that's good. All right, so we'll go back. Oh, you know what the issue is? Deselect. I selected all of them. So let me try this one more time. I'm going to select all the images, right click. So all the images are selected this right now. And there's quite a bit in here. And I forgot that earlier before the show, I was going through and I was um, un removing all the adjustments I've made to them since the earlier day, or the earlier show. So let's give it a second. Yeah, just make sure I'm not impatient. So I'm going to end up um, rotating, or I'm going to end up uh, removing all the adjustments. So as soon as as soon as Luminar catches up to what I'm doing, I'll undo all the adjustments, and then we'll start from the beginning. One moment. Here we go. And I'm just going to relaunch it, just be on the safe side. Here we go. Select all, right click, adjustments, and reset.
There we go. Now I'm going to reset everything. So all of these images that <laughs> I kept switching will go back to normal. There. All right. So here we are. I didn't realize how many of them got so thrown out of whack. And deselect. All right. So imagine the scan, like I said, with the scanner, you would come in, you select an image, either use the keyboard shortcut right here, control or command, and then you would use control or command, bracket key. So that's switched. Come through here and switched. Um, I could also click one, two, and then move them at the same time. Switched. Good. And switch. So you get the idea. Now, here's the thing with this. Do you remember there are certain, like, if I, you would think, well, I'll just create a look and copy that and select it in the look and apply it to all of them. It doesn't work that way because, again, this is part of, uh, th this is part of the, the tools that are not saved with the Luminar look. We mentioned this before that if you come over here to the canvas tools, a lot of the canvas tools, in fact, all the canvas tools, will not be saved in one of these looks that we created, which makes sense because the cropping, erase, and the clone and stamp tool are dependent on the actual image. All right? So now that we have that set, all right, so imagine you're scanning it, and someone asked me earlier, what did we use for the settings for the scanner? 300 pixels per inch PPI, 300 pixels per inch, and the Adobe RGB color space is what we were used. And when she put all of the images on the flatbed and scanned it, it individually scanned each one of them as if it was its own, and then tried to apply an auto-rotate. Now, based on how she put it on the flatbed, the scanner didn't know which way to turn, so some of them got flipped, but we just showed how we could quickly, inside Luminar, make that adjustment just by using the, the rotate command. And one more time. There we are. All right. So let me continue on a couple of these. Here again, some of the shots. Um, where'd it go? Here we go. All right. This one back in the old days. Uh, when I competed on the karate circuit, a reference photo. My brother John, who passed away, my brother John and I, during the Syracuse winter, showing how long icicles, <laughs> icicles are in our home in Syracuse. Again, my beautiful sister, my father playing. So, like I said, these are not picture-perfect images. But you know what? I love them. These are some things that I know that once I send this to my sister, she'll make calendars for the entire family, and she'll use these images um, for their, their date of birth, and that'll be the image for their, on the calendar. So, again, even though it's not my best work, I just look at this. Alec with his best friend Aaron, our next-door neighbor. Once again, I would apply... The uh, AI image enhancer. Look at that. All right. We go down through. I love this one here. And you can tell a theme. I love buying my son. Oh, here we go. Now, have you guys ever done this before? This was an impulsive buy. I came back from a late trip and walking through Orlando Airport, I stumbled upon this. And, um, yeah, my son had to have it. So, to me, I forgot about this picture. So, I'll come back over. And here we are. Look at that. Now, I'm noticing the, a little bit too much blue. All right, so come back to the color. And let's try to remove the color cast. See if that works. It's somewhat, but not perfect for this image. So, let's just come over to blue. And I'll desaturate it. There we go. Look at that. Much better. Before and after. All right. 
So Alyssa asked, what was I, what, what am I planning on doing with all these? Yeah, I, I'm going to use them, probably put them in a photo album or a digital album so I can share them with my family and friends. Now, I do want to show you this. What do you do? So here I am with my son, Alec. We have no idea who this is. It was a stranger. And this is my ex-wife. Well, what do you do? That's entirely up to you. Since she's in the image with my son, I have no problem keeping her there. If, let's say, I was remarried and my spouse had an issue with this being up on the wall, yes. That dude come into the crop tool, and I could crop it out, and none the wiser. But, again, because she is the mother of my child, I don't see an issue. But if, like I said, I was remarried and my new wife has, has an issue with it, then obviously I would put that up on the wall and give my ex-wife the other images. So, but we're all stuck inside right now. You can order one of these scanners and just start getting to work. Now, with that being said, let me, let me pull some of these questions first. Sorry. Oh, please say I showed it to you, right? Yes. So I did... I did show that crop, I hope. If not, let me just show it one more time. So all I did was I came over to the canvas tools, crop, there she is over here, made sure I, I, I unlocked it, and slide it into place, then click done. All right. So, all right, let's see, David. Um... David says, Google Photo Scan is a good scan. Good. Um, for small sets of photos, here we go, one at a time. Yep. You can even use your phone. You can even use your phone on that. Uh, Peter, I'll update with you about the Luminar 4.2. And other questions? Here we go. When you're adjusting, where are we? When you're adjusting uh, the photo color, does using the photo color histogram help? Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Edward. So I think Edward threw me that little bone to the, that little tidbit for everyone. Yes, you could use the color for the histogram to help you out with that. All right. Thank you, Edward. All right, let's come in. Any other questions? Good. All right. Now, here's, we're living in a new digital age. This here just replaced my reference photos, camera, my reference camera. So in the old days, I had the Canon, and again, it was a film camera, click, click, click. Well, now we all carry our cell phones. If we stick with that same philosophy, the same philosophy of these are reference photos, we don't have to freak out and make everything perfect. So let me show you what I did. And you'll see why I'm so excited about how Luminar's directories work. So here's my, my, my camera, my reference photo camera. I take a picture, I love these shots. Let's say um, we're at a resort and I'm photographing my nieces and nephews and my son Alec. I take all these shots. I have it to where it automatically uploads to Google Drive. So you can set that up in your camera, iPhone or with Android. But here's a switch or a little kicker. Ready? I have it upload to Google Drive into a to be processed folder. So when I go back to the room, guess what? These images will appear in Luminar without me having to do anything. you got to admit, that's really cool. So that right there is, is why I love the, the Active Directory. If you change something on your computer and it's, the folder is on in Luminar, it changes here. Change it in Luminar, it gets changed on your Folder, so it's that two-way sync that makes sure you don't lose any of your images. So now, obviously, ready for this? We'll use this whole group here. <laughs> what a motley-looking crew! Let's see. Yeah, let me reset everything. So here's the original, and just here's a real quick edit. Now, look at the quality versus the scanning, of course. All right. Now, if I feel it's a tad too much. I could dial it back, or I could start having fun 
and creating, oh, I like that, creating some of my, my own looks. And if I dial it back a little bit, guess what? I just created a muted color look. Moon Hatcher is one of my other favorites. All right, here's my son. Why with a cow tongue? Unbelievable. Um, so that's good. Here's another reference. My really close friend, Paul Fullrod, with Evil, his dog. And we did this whole photo shoot with him. Quick. Look at that. Full. A little bit less. I like less right about there. That's cool. Good. Let's see. Uh, oh, here's my beautiful sister again. She's on the beaches here in Florida. And yeah, let's reset it. Good. And reset. Almost there. There. And let it refresh. Here's the original. And then here's the enhancement, but I want it to ref. Uh, let me just do this. Yep. All right, here we go. So let's use our traditional, the, the typical one we love, AI Image Enhancer. So again, it's a cell phone photo. Look at this. I can always come back in here, bump up the shadows a little bit more. That brings her out. I can look through. Here, my good buddy, Jeremy Chan. Um, <laughs> yes, we like to have fun. Here's good Mikey and his beautiful wife. Again, reference photos. You reset it. Good. And apply. And actually, you know what? I like kind of like Mikey like this. Well, that looks cool. And then, of course, I can adjust it more. Now, here's what's really cool. Here's what's really, really cool about this. We have it in the to be process folder. Right? I have it to be processed. I could create another folder that's called Final Edits. And where do I put it? Inside my Google Drive. Now, yes, uh, Edward Jackson can um, Apple Photo Cloud link with Luminar like Google Drive. Here's the thing. In fact, I should have put that up for you. I'm sorry. There it is. Here's the thing. Your, your Apple, Dropbox, Google Drive, Whatever, whatever you have, if it's on your hard drive, if it's physically on your hard drive, like Google Drive and Dropbox, it's on your hard drive, you see the folder, yes, you can link it. Anything that's an actual folder can be linked inside Luminar. All right? I hope that answered it. So I love this shot of Mikey. What I could do is export the image. Uh, let's leave it as a JPEG. You know what? Again, it's just a reference. So he's probably going to only use it for, for um, Facebook. So 1920 on the long end is good. I like Adobe RGB. And yeah, the resolution is fine. Quality, I always put at 100 until my team, there we go, had a little chat with me. Oh, guys, I did it again. I apologize. Someone should have caught me on that one. So here we are my, with Mikey again and his beautiful wife. I'm going to export it. And from here, I can even put dash um, edit. You know, or complete, whatever you want to put. Uh, JPEG is good. I'm going to move it to the long edge, 1920 by 1080. And the resolution is 240 pixels, pixels per inch, not DPI dots per inch. Quality, I used to always leave it at 100. My teammates convinced me that between yeah, 65 to 75 is fine. You're not going to lose quality, especially for the size that we're shooting. Now, here we are. Browse. What I'm going to do is come by Google Drive. And let's see. Uh, under, my, under my Google Drive... Let's put it under, here's to be processed. Let's make this, um, make a new folder. And let's just call this um, 
Move on our edits. All right. So now that I know that it's Luminar Edits, I can just double click on it, select that as my folder, and now when I export this, it'll go into that Google Drive. Let that, let that go on. While we're doing that, Ed has a question. Um, where in Luminar 4 do you activate the link with iCloud? So guys, here's the thing. You're not act there, there's no links involved. I'm sorry, there's no activation involved is right here. All I'm doing is, maybe this will be your answer. I'm adding a folder. Well, I'm going to come over to my Google Drive. And I notice over here, I don't have, oh, Luminar Edits. Here's Luminar Edits. I'll select that folder. Now, Mikey just showed up. So if you were doing this with your iCloud, let's say you would click here. You would look for your iCloud or your Dropbox Whatever folder that you have, oh, here it is, Dropbox. So I can add it to Dropbox and pick one of these images or one of these folders and then just add the folder to Luminar, all right? So, Ed, I hope that answered your question. You're not activating the link. And I, you know what? And thank you for pointing that out because I didn't think to show people how I added it. So here I am with Luminar Edits. You see Mikey. Let's go back to be processed. I'm sorry, this cow tongue is killing me. I gotta edit it. Good. Ooh, that looks good. We'll send this to him today. Or, you know what? Let's make it more dramatic. Um, I like remarkable. Oh, I like that. All right. Yeah, that looks good. All right. Again, it's a reference photo. Export. Let's just put edit. And technically, I don't need to put edit because I'm putting it into a different directory. And what do we call this? Luminar edits. Select. Uh, long edge. 1920. And everything else is good. Export. So I'm exporting it. And now, when I look over my Luminar edits, boom! Guess what, guys? It appeared in my Luminar edits. Now, if I, and I wish I connected my phone for you guys like I did last time. Let me just make sure I'm going to go into my Google Drive. So I'm going into Google Drive. And what I want to do now is look for uh, Luminar edits. And I'll just do this. Right mouse click. Show in Explorer. And sure enough, Google Drive, and there's my um, Luminar edits. So if that's the case on my phone, I'll just come down and LLL. Wow, I have a lot of folders in here. Luminar edits. And it says, you're running out of storage space. All right. So guys, I wish, I am so sorry. There, that helps. I wish I connected the phone to the computer, but I mean, how cool is that? I just, I just did an edit. I just did the edit on my computer and it appeared on my phone, but here's what's really cool. Imagine if I gave that, let's say we're all, the family's all together and Mikey, your family, so I consider your family. We're all at a resort. We're doing all these cool shots. I sit down on the beach or on the pool side. I start going through my edits popping them in my Luminar edit folder. Hey guys, check your phones. They all check their phones. All the edits are complete. So that's what's really cool about sharing family photos, reference photos versus professional photos. So, um, awesome. So I hope that helps you understand when I did this project, I originally thought, well, I really want to do this to where I want to store our precious family photos. And then it kind of evolved. I thought, you know what? My sister's going to want these. So the nieces and nephews. Let me create a simple Google Drive, share the drive with all of them, and give it to them. Great. Now, how do I get all those images into that drive? I don't want to keep copying, paste, copy, paste. So I just made it part of Lumina. All right? So let me know what you guys think about that.
and we're almost we're right up on time. So guys, thank you. And the Active Directory was a question one of our other members had on our Facebook page. So when you do this, and when you start asking these questions, what happens is we'll look at them and we'll come up with questions or answers for them. Now, Mark asked, uh, why is opening three plus needed in four? Um, are you good? So, so Mark, th that's a great question for our support team. And, and you guys have, there's no problem with you dropping these questions here. If we don't answer them here, we'll talk to the support team and the support team will check these out. And what I can handle or answer, I'll answer. Stuff like this will send off to the support team. But if you could leave, Bruce, you're more than welcome. Please leave any comments and make sure you like, share, and, and hit the little, if you want to get notified when these are popping up, hit the little bell, is it the bell? Um, notification, so you'll know when we're, we're going to be broadcasting next. Typically, it's 5 o'clock Eastern time, Monday through Friday. Every so often, we sneak a few in on the weekends. And uh, the comments, leave in there things that you'd want to learn more, whether it's about Luminar, file structure, best practices on photo editing, uh, photography tips, write those into the comments, and we'll start adding them to a list of topics that we'll be covering. Guys, thanks so much for joining me for, the, um, for our Luminar time, because I really love this, this coffee break to where we can just talk, you guys ask questions, and I supply the answers. Well, I'm Benelli. Thanks so much for watching.